We've now estimated uh, a model. We have gone and um, selected the predictors we want. We evaluated the model. So we are now ready to do some forecasting. Now let's think a little bit about the regression model and the challenge forecasting brings. So if this is my specified model and I want to forecast the future, so let's say that my sample is from, as is per usual, from one to capital T, I want to go out of sample, T plus H steps ahead. The challenge here is that all my regressors, all my predictor variables are also of the index T plus H. And most commonly, I wouldn't know what the values of those predictors are. So we've got two types of forecasting we can, in general, which we can do. ex ante forecasts, which are made using only information available in advance. Hence, I know nothing about the future of our Xs, of my Xs. Hence, I need to uh, generate some forecasts for those Xs and use those forecasts to predict the Ys. This is one of the major challenges with the regression models, and some and people overcome this by using various uh, various uh, um, strategies uh, such as autoregressions and so on. Um, the alternative is to do ex post forecasting, where we use later information on the predictors. Now, there's a couple of scenarios here. One, a couple of settings. The first setting is. Uh, assume that I'm trying to predict a product's sale and one of my predictors is the expenditure, uh, advertisement expenditure that the company might spend. Um, the company might be willing to tell me what they're going to spend tomorrow. Hence, I've got that information and I can pass that onto the model. If I don't have that information, um, another setting is what we call scenario-based forecasting, where I assume some values for my future X's and see what effect that have on my forecast. Now, if my predictors include uh, things such as trend, seasonal or calendar variables, then these are known with certainty. I don't have to know these in advance. So these don't need to be forecast, they're easy to use. Actually, the first example we're going to show is actually using these. So let's grab uh, beer production from the Oz production table. Um, and we're going to model that using a trend and uh, seasonal dummies. Um, then we're going to pass this Mabel into the forecast function and this Fable onto the auto plot. And automatically, the forecast function generates um, the forecast without me needing to tell it what the trend and season um, are in the future. So this is one of the nice features of the TSLM function, um, you, which is very helpful to uh, model to estimate regression models and use this for forecasting uh, for time series data. So um, the the alternative which uh, which um, involves uh, X, uh, X uh, post forecasting uh, is scenario based forecasting. So here we're going to assume possible scenarios for the predictor variables. Now, the one thing that we need to keep in mind is that the predicting intervals for the scenario-based forecasts uh, do not include the uncertainty associated with the future values of these predictor variables. Um, to do this in Fable, it's, it's quite easy. Um, the TSLM function, again, has some very nice inbuilt. Uh, the TSLM and the Fable package have got some very nice inbuilt functions. So um, let's go back to the US consumption expenditure example and assume that we're going to predict consumption using income savings and unemployment as our predictors. What we do is use the scenarios uh, um, function. And within this scenarios function, we build um, the scenarios. So using the new data uh, function. So we need to pass in the table we are considering and um, how many steps ahead we're going to do. In this case, we're going to do four steps ahead and we're going to tell it how we want uh, these uh, variables of this table to be mutated. So in this case, we want income um, to have a 1% increase for all four steps. You can change that if you want to, but in this case, we say 1% increase in the next four quarters. Savings will have a 0.5% increase and no change in unemployment. And we're gonna call this our optimistic scenario, if you want, or increasing scenario. Uh, an alternative scenario would be 
uh, something uh, more pessimistic where income will decrease by 1%, savings will decrease by 0.5%, no change in unemployment, we're going to call this uh, our decrease scenario. Once you build this tibble, you pass that into uh, the forecast um, function together with uh, the your estimated model, the Mabel, and that will generate the forecast uh, um, automatically. So let's have a plot of these. Here we see the two scenarios, the um, optimistic or the, the one that increases um, both our income and our savings and the one down here which our savings and sorry our savings and income uh, decrease by 0.5 percent if we don't want to deal with future values of our predictors an alternative is to build uh, what we call predictive regression model notice here my predictors are lags va lagged values of the predictors so um, if I'm interested in forecasting H steps ahead, I can consider H lags of H step lags of the predictor variable. So when I roll this model forward for Y T plus H for our sample forecasting, everything is observed on the right hand side. And you can actually build a different uh, model for each forecast horizon you want to consider. Uh, we'll do a little bit more on this in uh, section uh, 10.6, where we talk about dynamic regression and predictive models, uh, predictive regression models within that setting.